And there's a look at a Union Pacific train west of San Antonio, thanks to Greg. We'll take a longer look at that later at the end of the program, but let's check out the weather this afternoon. Things are very quiet. High pressure dominating much of the East Coast, the Midwest, and even parts of the Great Plains. Pressure falls taken over in Colorado, low pressure area. That's very common during the spring, and that gives us that return flow and supports the development of the low-level jet. But as we can see by the dew points, those are in the 50s. So we're just not bringing up much moisture at all. The 60s are lurking down to the south, but that will take another day to get into place. Frontal system out towards the Pacific. Some cold air coming back in behind that, but temperatures are in the 60s. I think we're done with all that snow that we had a couple weeks ago. A little bit of snow on the east coast around Burlington, Saranac Lake, but it's mixed in with some rain around Boston, eastern Maine, and Albany. Cold air, nevertheless, coming into the northeastern U.S., but back behind it, 50s and 40s and a few 30s. Quite cold, so that's a little late taste of winter. Let's check out the Pacific. Very quiet. There is some cold air lurking off the northwest coast. That's it right there. That's going to be supporting some upper-level troughing. Up in Alaska, still got another blob of cold air up there in the Beaufort Sea. 1038 millibar high up there, driving some more cold air into the interior regions, but still a little bit further south, temperatures are in the 40s. Heading out towards Canada, warming up a little bit. Are we done with the sub-zeros? Yeah, it looks like it. Pretty close, right there around Baffin Island, one degree. But this is a large chunk of cold air. It's pretty much sitting directly within that low pressure area. It's, you can see the thickness, the blue lines right here. They're kind of concentric, kind of merged in with the pressure field. And that tells us that that low is occluded. It's probably got a quasi-barotropic structure. And we're not going to see much development with that unless it gets some upper air support, but typically those lows tend to gradually weaken and die. Very quiet out in the Atlantic. Iceland coming up to 46 degrees around Reykjavik, and then down into the rest of the Atlantic. Way off to the edge, there's a large, broad system that's been spinning around for a couple days now, but that appears to be out of the picture for those of us in North America. So as we mentioned, things are getting unsettled in the central Rockies, and we've got the appearance of a dry line on the high plains. We can take a look at that on the surface plots. Let's zoom in a little bit closer to the moisture. There's the Texas Panhandle. So where is the dry line? Let's look around. Altus, 56 degree dew point, dropping to 52 at Woodward, 49 at Liberal. So it's gradually diminishing. This is not really a classic dry line setup. But as you get into the western Texas panhandles, you get into lower 40s and even 30s. So what I've went with is kind of a very primordial dry line, about like this. So it's dividing the air in Dow Hart, 43 degree dew point, from 56, 58, 53, further down in the lower elevations. And even 24 there at Springfield, yeah, that's definitely some dry air. So this would be an area to kind of keep an eye on and watch for those gradients to start tightening up over the next couple days. So further to the west, we see the wind field coming up quite a bit. Southwesterly flow, this all looks like air from the interior regions. And up there near Farmington, 80 degrees, 82, 80 at Albuquerque, that's certainly gonna be tropical air, kind of a dry continental tropical air mass, but still 
that's going to be originating from the plateau regions. And if we check out the satellite loop, we do see the convective nature of this cloud mass here. Lots of CBs, towering cumulus, and if you look at the anvils, they're definitely sheared. You can see the anvil plumes spreading downstream. So they do have a bit of upper air support. Very likely some cold temperatures in the mid and upper levels helping to maintain those thunderstorms. Let's take a look at some of these cells on the southern end. They are going to be back behind that pseudo dry line, feeding off of very dry temperatures, probably going to be very high based. And there you go, the radar from Clovis, New Mexico, showing some disorganized cells, some high reflectivity showing up here and there, maybe some hail coming down. However, echo tops. Those are only coming up to about 35,000 feet. Probably a better measure is the reflectivities aloft in the mid-levels. We can see 60 dBZs up near 15,000, but nothing much above that. The more vigorous cells on the tail end right here, if we go up to higher tilts, we had some slightly higher reflectivities up there at about 23,000, so these will probably be very photogenic cells. However, I'm not going to expect them to do too much. If we look at the clear air velocity field, right there at the radar, only a very slight amount of shear indicated. Let me bring that up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, some shear, but the low level flow is out of the south-southwest, up at about... 5,000 feet above ground level, it's more out of the southwest, so the shear is not really all that great. But there you go, that's what we have out there right now. There's how it looks on the close-up satellite imagery. The anvil's a little bit fuzzy, but some more vigorous tops right there, but not much of a moisture field out ahead of it. Pretty much clear skies out there towards Amarillo. Nevertheless, just enough strength to call for a slight risk from about Boise City up towards Elkhart down towards Vega. And we can see that the primary hazards are going to be wind gusts with a little bit of hail. Now this is not something that really deserves a full workup, so we're going to use the high resolution rapid refresh and check out the forecast for any organization any interesting structures and it just kind of looks like popcorn stuff rolling eastward forming up a little bit into a multi-cell line you can see a few cells indicating a little bit of a hint of rotation right there around fort supply around slap out and maybe around Gaiman. but that's going to be just after dark 4z we're talking about 10 p.m., 11 p.m. However, those will, yeah, a little bit of organization there. That's interesting up there near Canadian. That's a little bit more than I expected, so that will bear watching, of course. But we're expecting that to dissipate during the second half of tonight. And let's take a look at a quick proximity sounding around sunset. We're going to go just ahead of these cells here around Pampa, between there and Canadian. And what we see here, moderate lapse rate, moisture not that great, starts out at 53, diminishes to the 40s, above 850 millibars, some dry air aloft. Looks like we're catching some of that anvil cloud right there. The shear is not too bad. I mean, we can see that right there, 220 to 400 SRH, but again, kind of a high temperature dew point spread. Not a whole lot of instability, not really many boundaries until after dark. And the D-Cape way up there near a thousand, so there is gonna be a lot of outflow being kicked up by these cells. Somewhat better chances for severe weather tomorrow. A Little bit more spread out, maybe not slight risk, but 
it's going to be a little bit closer to the usual target areas. And then for Friday, looks like more of a classic chase event. I-35 from Oklahoma up to Kansas. Enhanced risk around Topeka. Temperature records, that's a great barometer of what's happening. Today, we don't have any temperature records. We're near the seasonal normals. So let's take a look at tomorrow. Definitely warming up for tomorrow. 91 at Amarillo, 94 at Borger. That's going to be indicating some downslope with dry air west of that dry line. And then further out east, some more of that cold air coming out of Canada, dropping the temperatures into the teens, 20s, and 30s with a record low possibly being broken around Washington, D.C. Then for Friday, classic chase day, probably an enhanced risk right there around Tulsa, slight risk up and down. That 96 at Childress, that's going to be downslope coming in from back behind the dry line. And we're still kicking out the rest of that cold air through New York City and Maryland, Baltimore, looking at 40 degrees to start Friday morning. Continued cold in the Northeast for Saturday. That seems to be a recurrent theme. I, I think last year, it seemed like almost every day during the warm season, there was a big chunk of cold air coming through the Northeastern U.S. Seems like that's happening again. Of course, I'm just guessing here. Anyway, record highs approaching that in Mississippi. So likely some downslope flow, maybe some ridging aloft in that part of the country. Then for Sunday, May 1st, yes, May is here just about. We're going to be near seasonal normals to start out the new calendar month. And checking in on Big Rig Steve, he is northbound through the southern tip of Illinois, heading from Dallas to Fort Wayne. Clear skies, he's under that high pressure area just west of that ridge, so there's not going to be much to look at. That's how it works out on the surface map right there. He is pretty much right there near that high pressure area. So not much to look at for today. Looking elsewhere around the country, a weak front coming through Central California, Central Nevada, some bare clinicity in the atmosphere, but overall very dry. Going further north into Oregon, we get into some of that colder air. We start picking up some cold core cumulus, still kind of high based. But as you go further east, closer to the dynamics, we pick up a few showers out there around eastern Idaho, Salt Lake City, out in that area. And then we've got more of a cold core set up in Washington. Low upper level heights, cool temperatures, and strong heating at the surface. That's a good combination for towering cumulus and showers, and that's what they got. Some lee side troughing there in Montana. They're picking up a little bit of energy, moisture, and lift from that weather system further south. So some showers moving through central Montana there. In the Dakotas, underneath high pressure, but some evidence of some cold weather. We do know it's a very cold day up in that region. Snow on the ground around Minot and up there near Duluth. Then dropping back south, we get into that weather system coming out of Colorado. Some impressive tufts of cirrus coming out of Denver into North Platte. There's those thunderstorms we talked about coming out of New Mexico, about to enter Boise City, Clayton, and Naravisa. In Texas, there's that paltry moisture return, kind of a narrow wedge of low cloud coming up, two points in the 50s in that region, and looks like some weak thunderstorms going up around Mount Davis. Some thunderstorms in Florida along an old frontal boundary. But much of the east coast underneath high pressure. 
as we go further north, we see some indications of cold air advection. So we get that strong heating, some cool mid and upper level temperatures. This is similar to the setup over Washington. And as we go further north, cold mid-level conditions causing these cumulus clouds to rise and spread out in the form of stratocumulus and altocumulus sheets. So that's covering much of upstate New York. Maybe some weak rain showers coming out of that. And then we get into the main Bear Clinic system up there in New England. A little bit of rotation showing up in that satellite loop. And that's probably enough to cover for today. There's not a whole lot going on. So hope you enjoy your Wednesday evening. We'll be back on Friday and we'll talk about that severe weather in the Central Plains. And we'll try to get the video up early so you can get a head start on that forecast. Hope you all have a good rest of the week and we'll see you in a few days. Bye-bye.